Hi guys and welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about my experiences with the Axis PNG 1150 foil. You might have heard and seen a lot about this foil and are curious about what and how it works. Then you're in the right place. You will get all your answers in this video. <laughs> all right, let's get started. I'm Frederik Ekmark and this is Live Through the Lens. After a year and a half riding foils, I have the basic covered to a level I'm happy with. Of course, still learning, but when I was looking further ahead, the question became apparent. What or which heading would I like my riding to go from here? As a wing foil rider, I've developed my riding from just learning the basics with bigger, easier gear and then slowly moving to smaller equipment. I wanted to have a mix of gear that I could use depending on the conditions here in Mallorca. We don't have the strongest winds or the biggest waves here, uh, we have, but we have many days with wind. And in the summer, we have the thermic winds every afternoon for like three, four months. And this is really cool, or should I say, there it's really hot. Uh, the progression to smaller and wider variety of gear is quite normal. And when you have the gear and skills, you're having a blast on the water as you can always adjust your material to have a really great time uh, when you're out riding. Last year, there was a lot of buzz here around here in Mallorca about going as small as possible uh, with every, everything, board, with foil and wing. But people are now realizing it actually requires different material depending on what you want to achieve. So I want to ride in most conditions and because of that, I have a wide variety, needing a lot of equipment, and I think the mix and sizes I have are not unusual for a rider after a year or so into the sport. Now, this is my gear. A starboard wing board, 5.2, 90 liters. This is my fourth board. I have a starboard foil, 2,400 square centimeter, 1,700, 1,300. I have a carbon monolith mast at 92 centimeters, and I got two wings, a 5.2 and a 4.0 of ENSYS. Now, let me know in the comments what gear you ride, so we all can see how the setup looks up for you guys across the world. Also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. To see more videos, click on the subscribe button. This is also supporting my work doing more videos. Let's see if we can reach the 1000 subscribe mark by my one year anniversary in April. Tell your friends and, tell, and their friends <laughs> and click on the bell to get notified when I publish new videos. All right, thank you so much for your support. You're awesome. Okay, now back to the review. So Wingfoil is developing into different disciplines and the material is following suit. We now have freestyle, downwinders and high speed uh, competitions. We have distance riding, etc. When you are thinking about where you want to take your riding, these are different roads to choose from. Well, you can always choose to do all of them at different times, depending on the condition as well. I was thinking about where to take my riding. Do I want to go freestyle and get another smaller board, put on foot straps and chase jumps and so on? I could also follow Ruben into the land of riding waves and doing downwind rides. The equipment I have now lets me do all of what I want to do in the water. It works from 10, 11 knots and up. It also lets me have fun in the waves. And that is the direction I felt was right for me. I wanted to move forward to learning and getting better at riding waves and long downwind runs. As often as possible it is to do here in Mallorca. Now, as a starboard foil rider, it, it intrigued me with all these Instagram, Facebook and YouTube videos of people riding waves with the Axis foils. I'm really happy with the starboard foils, don't get me wrong, but for better and longer glide, it looked like the Axis foils really had something extra and starboard doesn't have much to offer. I've seen many videos about foil, dog starts up foiling, riding waves and the most successful rides were with the Axis foils. And I was interested. If I had the Axis foil, it would help me get into riding waves easier and longer. I could also try out dog start and sub fall, and that was suddenly a trio of things that looked appealing to me. Hmm. 
interesting. Not long after those thoughts, I had the fortune of having a friend here in Mallorca who was selling his axis foils. It was a 90 centimeter aluminum mast with two, yes, two foils, a PNG 1150 and an HPS 1050, and two additional stabilizers. Perfect foil setup, and what a stroke of luck. First ride was with the HPS 1050 and the really fast 460 rear wing, and it was terrible. In hindsight, it was probably a bit too weak wind for the first ride. I'm very comfortable riding foils. I thought how different could it be with a different foil, right? I couldn't understand how it could be so difficult riding the Axis 10 1050. I've heard so much good stuff about it. I tried the first ride with the new Axis foils and the 2022 starboard wingboard. It did not work well at all. A really terrible experience. This surprised me a lot. How could this foil be so different? Or was it the new board? So what do you do when things don't go well? You take a step back to when things were working well and assess the differences, right? I realized changing the foil to a board which I was not really completely used to was a bit too much at once maybe. So I dusted off my 2021 starboard wing board, the 5.8, and tried again. I took another step back and changed the HPS 1050 to the larger PNG 1150 front wing as well to make it even easier. As I have four different stabs, I also changed around with the stabs to find a combo that worked well. And surely this approach worked. I was out riding again and it was better. Whew. The 1150 is a 1787 square centimeter high aspect wing and it flies and glides really well. In my evaluation between all the rear wings resulted in that I found that the all round 440 would be a superb choice for stability and speed at the time. However, a significant difference from the starboard foils that I was used to riding was the weight. The Axis foil 1150 and the aluminium mast are heavy, like really heavy. This affects the handling on shore and in the water as well. It pulls the back of the board down in a way that I was not used to and also affects the board negatively. As it's heavier, it's into the liters I have in the board to keep me afloat and this makes the board sit lower in the water and it affects the initial power needed to get going. Not a great difference, but noticeable in low wind a lot. So, after I've made maybe 5-6 rides with the 1150 and the 5.8 to get to know the foil, things was working well again. I could then switch to the 2022 starboard wing board again. Oof. <laughs> The glide is really great with the Axis PNG 1150. It's also very stable. It's not, however, a quick turner. Just look at the profile and you realize this immediately. Here compared to the Starboard 1700, here you see a big difference between the two foils. The Starboard foil has a different profile and maneuvers quicker and turns really well. But has a lot less glide and the 1150 is the ex exact opposite. To understand a little more about the difference between the wings, we can dig in a little about aspect ratio. This is important knowledge to choose the right wing for your lever and the side type of riding. A higher aspect ratio wing is typically longer, thinner, faster, has lower drag but lower lift. High aspect ratio wings are often used in speed oriented disciplines. High aspect ratio wings have often less surface area than low aspect ratio wings. A typical surface area range would fall in about 700 to 1800 square centimeter. A smaller surface area wing generates less lift but gives the rider better control in higher speeds. High aspect ratio front wings are usually designed to have a slimmer profile or leading edges for less drag or less resistance in the water. On the opposite, the low aspect ratio wings are typically used in a surf orientated or freestyle disciplines of foiling. A low aspect ratio wing is shorter, fatter and has higher lift but also higher drag. These wings are easier to control and slower, making them more forgiving and ideal for learning to fold. A fatter leading edge creates more lift and a typically more curved shape gives carving abilities and tolerance for change in rider balance. Low aspect ratio wings typically fall between 1200 and 2400 square centimeter in surface area and are designed for control, reactivity and early takeoffs. Low aspect wings are used across most disciplines of foiling, including downwind, paddling, classic surfing and surf style or free ride wing foil. They are also frequently used as a component of an ideal beginner setup. So, 
back to the Axis P&G 1150. After about 20-25 sessions with the foil, I'm not totally happy with this foil. I have used it in all situations as a replacement of my starboard foils and this has not been a very successful move. I have struggled with the foil during normal riding with a lot of jibes and not, lo not a lot of waves. I know now that these conditions are not really suitable for this wing. I, I've got more and more put off and as I have been riding this foil, it was just not fun to ride. I tried dock start a few times and that has been fun, but difficult. I also tried subfoil with different boards and that had also been fun, but very difficult. My success in dock start and subfoil was not depending on the foil. On the contrary, the PNG 1150 is excellent for that. It just takes a lot of attempts and a lot of training to learn. Clearly, the wing is versatile in different disciplines, but not in all. My verdict and final thoughts are these. The Axis PNG 1150 is best for dock start, subfoil, riding waves. In these disciplines, the wing works exceptionally well but it's not a great for normal riding where there are lots of turning, the width and the profile of the wing hinders you from having a blast. I assumed it would replace my starboard foils completely and work in all conditions, and this led to my disappointment. So, in conclusion, anyone who wants to do dock start, subfoil, ride waves and downwinders, this is a really, really great wing for you. I can recommend it. Also, it is great for heavier riders since it's a quite high, a big high aspect ratio wing. There you have it. Now you know when to have an Axis P&G 1150 foil mounted under your board. Let me know in the comments what your experiences are with the 1150. I will try it again with a different rear wing to see if I can get, get to live, live up the foil a bit riding downwinders. Let me know if you have any other thoughts about the 1150. I am now moving to test riding the Axis HPS 1050 wing more. This is a smaller high aspect wing uh, of 1500 square centimeters. It has a similar profile to the 1150, but it's smaller. So my take is it will handle turns better and it will be more fun in various conditions. I will however need some more wind to get, my, get it to work well. My guess is I can use it from maybe 12, 13, 14 knots and up. Stay tuned to my channel to find out more about the Axis HPS 1050 and other foils, boards and wings as I will do more testing and reviews in coming videos. Now, if you have watched this far, you are awesome. And put awesome in the comments below to let me know that you've been with me all the way. Thank you for watching. This is Fredrik Ekemark uh, signing off. Remember to subscribe if you haven't done that already and hit the bell to enable notifications of new videos coming out. And then I will, yes, I will see you in the next video. Stay safe.